morning boys and girls, this is Ian giving you a quick run through of the brooder that uh, I have designed from ground up and also made available in Australia and possibly worldwide soon but anyway this is a brooder, turn the light on now the purpose of a brooder is generally is after you hatch your hatchlings whether it's, it's uh, big quails, birds, chickens, ducks etc this is all suited for it, all types of birds um, you, you need to keep it warm for generally three weeks or so in a uh, thermal box with the temperature um, with control temperature so with this here is a brooder box the size is 1300 uh, in length millimeters 1.3 meters 1300 millimeters 600 high and 600 deep front to back okay so that is the dimension of the box it's made out of foam sandwich board so the foam sandwich board are these things here hopefully you can see in the camera it's 14 mil and they are super light for what they are if this was built out of wood or chipboard or ply you'd be very very heavy um, and this is actually very light just one person with one hand see that i can lift it i can basically lift it up with one hand on the side like so, so it is very light for what it is um, now quick run through the design was based around cleanliness uh, it needs to be clean it needs to be um, uh, easy to maintain and easy access for the manure now the beautiful thing about this is so this is a cover with a handle just to keep it insulated and uh, to keep the, keep the temperature inside warm the poop trays one two and three and you get one two three you get three spare poop trays why because come cleaning day you would pull it out and if you pull it out you can't expect the birds to stop doing the business they will continue to do the business into here which makes it wet and mushy and yucky especially when you're talking quails so you grab a new one shine away um, and then that's it usually when you when you're cleaning it talk to your quails sing to your quails so they actually look up at you and they're not uh, inclined to do the business so when things are happening they will sort of what's happening up and they check it out and they will not be pooping um, if they're startled so this is how we keep it clean three of them six trays easy changeover easy and then you can clean the other one and put it ready for the next changeover now um, let's go through the uh, components the electrical components uh, whilst we've got the camera on the, uh, on the on the tripod that covers on just like that over here is the heat on the right hand side over here is the fan or the cooling system and in the middle is the LED light controller okay off on on the right hand side is the heat now the heat thermostat these two are thermostat cooling thermostat heat thermostat um, temperature control each of them have their own probes so at the moment 70 degrees inside there hold it in my hand can you see the temperature rising 19 20 21 22 so my, this is my body heat on the probe so this can be strategically placed anywhere in your brooder plenty of lines um, so with this set I've set it at 35 degrees look I'm not going to run through how to use this thermostat just to give you a quick introduction here we'll do the uh, thermostat function later in, in another video so right now it's at set at 35 so at, right now it's 22 degrees because I was just holding it with my hands now can you see that red light on the uh, top left of the LCD? That means there's power going through. That means um, it hasn't reached 35 degrees. It's going to give power to, I'm not too sure you can see it on the camera, the two ceramic lights. So right now, it's uh, radiating heat, 100 watts ceramic heat bulbs on one here. If I touch it, I'll burn my hands because it's quite warm there now. And on this side here is another 100 watt uh, ceramic uh, bulb. So they, these two are giving the heat source connected to this thermostat. Once it reaches 35 degrees, the light will go off and they will stop heating. No more power is going through your heat lamps and the temperature from there on will, will maintain for a while and then drop. And once it drops below 35 again, guess what? It comes back on. So that's how it keeps the brooder at the right temperature um, that you can set to whatever temperature you like and you desire. Moving to the left hand side, uh, this was a feature we just added in. Um, not really necessary, but it's a bonus, okay? Uh, without it, you survive, the chicks will survive, but this, it works the opposite way of the heat. For example, I've set this at 40 degrees, 
Okay, 40 degrees is what I've said. So you've got a situation where in the middle of summer, it gets awfully hot. Um, and of course, uh, the bulb, I mean, the ambient temperature is really hot. You set your temperature as you need to for the brooder. But once it goes over a certain temperature, so this is about um, turning the fan on when it hits a certain temperature. So I've set it at 40 degrees. When the temperature inside, based on the probes here, that's still tied up, that's why it's short, but you can see 18 degrees at the moment, 19, 20. So it's rising as I touch it with my hands. Body temperature. So you place that inside. Once the temperature reaches your set temperature, in this example, is 40 degrees, which I've set, the fan will come on. There's two fans in here. On the left top and the right top. Let's see if the camera can actually see it. Yes, uh, yeah, the camera can sort of see it. Yeah, yeah. There's right, right hand side, left hand side. There we go. That is the two fans, and this will turn the fan on once it reaches the temperature that you set. So how the fan works is it draws, it draws the uh, the air out. So all the stale air, all the manure, all the smell actually draws it out, and it will pull new air through the vent holes at the back and, and on the side. So that's how the cooling things work. And there's also an override switch. For example, let's say you wake up in the morning, you check it out and there's a lot of condensation or it's very smelly or whatever. You want the fan just to uh, act as, as an exhaust fan. This switch here overrides regardless if this is, um, hasn't reached the temperature or if that's off, <coughs> this switch is wired directly. If you can listen to the change in uh, the actual fan RPM, I'm not too sure if the camera uh, picked up the audio uh, for the fan. You can hear woo So the fan are turning right now. It's air coming up and it's air coming up on this side as well. Okay, so you can always override the exhaust fan, which is a nice feature, I reckon, instead of mucking around with the, with the, with the temperature to, to just, just to turn the fan on. So that's the fan all sorted. <coughs> and now moving on to the next part. Now on the next part, I'm going to move the camera and show you the inside. But first of all, let's take these doors out, just as easy as that. The other door. So everything is removable, cleanable, removable. And another note is foam is waterproof, 100%. So you can dunk this in water and it will not swell, will not absorb anything. Um, you, can, you can high pressure clean it. I don't recommend you high pressure cleaning inside here because there's electricals on top, but you can remove this, which I'll show you later on. So now moving in to have a look inside. This is a, this is a perimeter fence within the box. See how it moves? This can be taken out. I'll just take it out for an example. So let's just show the removal of this fence. I've got to be careful. I actually just burnt my hands on the ceramic bulb just then. Uh, so this comes out. And this is just a square box with a perimeter. And the purpose of this is to keep the quails from pooping or to keep them contained in the area that you want them to poop. So moving into here, can you see how this is the bottom floor? Let me take this rail out, the one that covers the poop trays. There we go. So you've got a clear view of the floor. So that's the floor. And as it is now, without the actual fencing that we just showed before, which is this thing here, this big square fence, the quails can run at their leisure and do their business on the back wall, on the side wall, and on the front wall here, which will make it very messy. So the aim of the game is to have them do their business on the mesh so it goes down straight into the um, poop tray. Now the poop trays, the perimeter... The actual poop trays, right, is guaranteed that the manure will not fall on the edge. You fall in there because of these overhang. See, it overhangs the poop trays all around. Back, side, front, side. On all four sides of the poop trays, there's an there's a overhang of these boards. So uh, the quail manure will definitely always be within contained within the tray. Now, let's say it's time to clean the floor. How do we go about it? Easy. Here we go. Just gonna make sure this doesn't fall out. Let's put it to the back. That's the temperature probe, which will be uh, secured. Let me just move this to the back again. There we go. See this? Everything is removable and cleanable. So that, here you go, Bob's your uncle. 
That is the floor manure mesh floor um, out. Get yourself a high pressure cleaner, blast it down, sanitize it, clean it, do what you want, dry it, and then thereafter we will install it back in. It's hard to do with one hand, but just let's have a go. There we go, even one hand is possible. Put the thermoset probe there. Let me just take this probe on the outside for now. And I will put back the perimeter, the fence, and I'll show you what's the purpose of the fence. So take this out, take this up, rather. Put it inside. So everything is all very modular. It's a made to fit. Here we go. Step. And this will sit like so. Can you notice that there's rails here as well? See the rail? There's a rail on the left hand side, and there's a rail on the right hand side here as well. And there's a rail along the back as well. So, with the camera moved to the right a little bit, sorry. Yeah, so there's a rail on the right hand side here as well, as well as the left and the back. This is where, without the rails, this thing is dependent on the mesh floor to sit on. So yeah, see how it's actually moving with the mesh floor? But if I pull the mesh out, guess what? It doesn't fall down. Why? It's suspended by the, um, the rails on the side. So this was part of the design as well. So you can actually pull the mesh out, do what you want without moving this. And if you have to remove this, you can remove it as well after you remove the floor or whatever. So it's just well thought of and convenient. Put this back in, lift it up, push it in. There you go. See, that's how easy it is. Put the uh, cover back on. This will keep the flies away and keep the uh, temperature maintained, uh, especially for the first week or so. And the highest temperature is needed. Now, with my, um, as you can see, with the fence installed, can you see how the quails can only run on the mesh on the side, on the mesh on the back, on the mesh on the, on the side, and in here, sorry, is also just the mesh as well. And the only piece of uh, plank of foam that they walk on is the middle ones, which can be cleaned off quite easily. So they'll be walking just within, and all the manure goes into the poop tray. So that's how clean it is. And of course, if they do jump up, quails will jump and fly and jump. They land up here, they'll get bored and they jump back down again. So, and of course, at the front there'll be the uh, perspex door, which I'll put put back on just for the sake of the video, like that. Here we go. Oh, dokie. Back on first. Back door. Then the front door. If not, you'll not get the front. And the thermostat probe, which is loose at the moment, going to there. And we just go around and just look at the side. Moving to the right hand side, there's the slits. What I like to do is, uh, especially when it's uh, day one or the first week for the brooder, we like to cover up so with cardboard. Just cover it up because you want the maximum heat and with that that covers and keeps the hot air from coming out because it's very hard to maintain temperature with those holes there it's actually virtually impossible especially during winter cover it up and of course that's your fan hole which uh, hot air will also rise and escape from these are included these are the CNC this is the part that was cut out so put it there and tape the hole up and they'll maintain a sealed side and moving to the back, same story with the back. See how there's uh, slots cut out for ventilation? Same thing. We get our cardboard and we cover it up. And the other one, we cover it up as well. So that's what we do to maintain temperature uh, on the first week. And on the right-hand side, same story. You get your block of foam that's included. Tape it up there. Bit of cardboard, tape it up. And... Uh, Increase the ventilation as needs to um, as they grow. Now, how many coils can you put in here is the question. Um, you can 
you can comfortably put 70 quails in here and you hold up to 80 quails up to three weeks old so from day one to three weeks so we, we, we keep them um, in controlled temperature in the brooder for three weeks 35 degrees the first week 30 degrees the second week 25 degrees the the third week and if in the summer of course it can be quicker it can be uh, as, as quick as two weeks so it just depends so if it's two weeks yep yeah, 80 quails not a problem 80 to 90 quails but if it's three weeks then probably max out at 80 quails and uh, that's it pretty much that's how it works uh, thermal step for the heat on the right hand side thermal step for the cooling on the left hand side override switch for the fan uh, just to show you the fan in action turning it off there we go um, spare poop trays poop tray cover or the actual bottom um, bottom compartment cover removable uh, perspex doors and lastly but not least is the uh, seven day timer for the light now this is a seven day program which you can set you set the, you basically set Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday or whatever you set your um, your time and then you set your program so why is this important if you don't need the program just turn it off turn it on the main switch to control this is here there's a built-in battery to keep the time and the dates bang off on off on now seven day timer program um, why, why would you need this if you have this uh, in a shed where it's dark all the time or minimal light you can simulate daylight so you can go seven o'clock in the morning so it's, it's at night you go seven o'clock Monday to Sunday seven o'clock in the morning the light comes on and the light stays on all the way until when let's say maybe you know, six o'clock in the evening or seven o'clock 12 hours of light whatever you want to set and then automatically you'll turn off without you even touching this and regardless of what the program is set, when you want to turn it on, you just do this. So right now it's, it's in manual, and right now it's back on automatic mode, see? So it's quite a versatile um, timer uh, if you need the function. If not, just use it as an on, off, and you've got a timer, uh, a clock for your reference as well. Um, and there's plenty of space here to stick your notes. Sticky notes, what date uh, they were born, blah, blah, blah. Um, other than that... Uh, the material is foam, can be cleaned, it's water resistant, uh, resistant, and the the top of your brooder, let's do, let's have a look at the top of the brooder. Turn the light on, coming up from underneath, you've got your ceramic heat globes, which are super hot, so be careful of them, and that's the metal holder to uh, be able to handle the heat. In the middle is the LED light. They are all a uh, twist. I think it's called the E E thirty seven or E twenty seven Edison uh, type bulb. So you twist it in, okay? Uh, not the bayonet. I think the bayonet is called B B something B twenty six B twenty seven as well. But these are the twisting one, the screw in type. Sorry, screw in. Um, that's screw in as well, and that's screw in as well, of course. So sorry for the re but the reflection. This light, this heat lamp, and that heat lamp is wired together in parallel. And, and controlled by the heat thermostat so that it controls both of them and for example let's say if you ever don't need to have both of them running all you do is when it's cold just untwist one side and then you lose contact and then it will not there'll be no heat coming from there and it'd be only working on one but generally uh, work with two is good so they get even spread of heat uh, if not if you have one they might just cuddle in the middle but with a thermostat look the reason why you have one and not two is you want to have a cold spot and a warm spot for them to run away from the heat if you have to but with a the thermostat everything's maintained so they're comfortable right through so keep the both lamps on and having both of them on does not use more power it just that means uh, the, the with one or two the temperature is always maintained anyway so thank you for watching and hopefully uh, this gives you a good insight to what this brooder can do for you, uh, for your quails, chickens, and all sorts of birds.